It's a lot easier for opposites to attract when they get put in a two-pack. Here's your look at new diamond select. Darkwing Duck, Darkwing Duck, and Nega Duck. This box set of Darkwing Duck and Nega Duck is based on their appearance in the Darkwing Duck animated series. Each figure features 12 points of articulation and includes accessories and interchangeable parts. It was designed by David Forrest, Kinetic Underground Incorporated, and sculpted by Varner Studios. Just before we get a closer look at two opposing terrors that flap in the night, I'd like to thank the folks over at Diamond Select. Yes, that did provide this sample of Darkwing Duck and Nega Duck that we could have a look in this review. The set is currently available online or in stores for around $50. That works out to be about $25 a figure. The figures, though, aren't sold separately, so if you're looking to get yourself Darkwing Duck, you're going to have to get yourself Nega Duck in the process, which I suppose would be one thing I would have maybe done differently, just the size of also the packaging as well. I think that these figures could have also easily been sold separately for around the $25 price point. That being said, though, both the figures are going to be about the same size if they're using very similar molds. Darkwing Duck and Nega Duck, respectively, are 5 inches in height, or the figures are going to be about 12 and a half centimeters tall. Loads and loads of accessories come packed along with both Darkwing and Nega Duck. Just before we actually look at the things, they also come include with display stands. You may be looking at these and thinking, well, those are awfully small stands. How are they going to accommodate the figure's feet? Well, they don't. They don't have pegs on the bombs of these, so they won't actually attach the, the under flat feet of Darkwing and Nega Duck, but they actually are there instead to serve the purpose of help balancing some of the figures. So, for example, if you have Darkwing Duck, for example, with his gas gun in his hand to prevent the figure from falling forward, they kind of give you the, a little supporting like a supporting base just something that you can help it really helps more so when it comes to Nega Duck. Nega Duck carries around a big giant bazooka so that's certainly something that's going to help aid the figure from falling over you know for the fact that they include things like this are nice touches but still i would have liked if also they could have included regular circular display stands as the figures do have slight looseness in their ankles we're going to talk more about that in a moment i mean for me to say that as well obviously i would have already looked on the bottom of their flat feet and yes they do have peg holes so even though they don't have display stands dedicated to them you probably could then use display stands provided by other companies the figure, like I said, does come with, there's really a lot to really cover off outside of their fedoras and their capes, things that you would expect both figures to have. Then, of course, they also come in with some swappable heads, various different weapons, and, of course, uh, some other things as well. Of the other things as well, the figures come include with both interchangeable, really, hands, being that they both have duck hands. It doesn't really matter necessarily that one is for dark, dark wing, one is for nega duck. You can use either one of these. You do have gripping hands. Now, I have already popped off one of them from Darkwing Duck so he could actually hold his gas gun, but you just swap these out with the provided holes on the ends of their forearms and swap them out. They also come include with a couple of gestured hands, too. Uh, Negaduck already has his on one side. Darkwing has it on the other side. And just by the process of elimination, then I just happen to have myself a perfect pair remaining behind. And then, of course, the figures also come include with some closed fist punching duck hands. Those are all, all, we'll move those all off to the side. Like, uh, like I said, the figure does also come include this gas gun. In the gas gun in the cartoon, not only serves to prevent masking of Darkwing Duck when he's creeping down on criminals, but he also uses it as well for a grapple line. Now, what they've done, not only have they given us a really neat looking gas gun like he has in the cartoon, but they've given him different effects that you can actually then add. First of which, the figure comes in clue with a grapple hook. It's just a case, honestly, of just putting it on the end of the barrel and actually stays fine in place. It's not going to fall out. If you wanted to also have it extended out like he's already fired it, then there is one that's a slightly extended version that has already the cable underneath it. Same hook, but just the fact that the rope is just a little bit different. And that plugs in place also as well. Very secure. It's not going going to go anywhere. And then also as well, he comes in clue with the gas ejection. Like he, he basically has it like he shot a gas capsule. Which would, again, if you wanted to use yourself the supporting stand, you could also just prop that up in the front of it to prevent Darkwing Duck from falling forward. By the way, though, uh, you can also take as well the figure. And this whole time of talking about this, we can actually get this in Darkwing's hand. It fits pretty well in his hand, actually. It's not going to be going anywhere. But just with so much weight, so much weight now in the front of the figure, you do definitely want to use yourself the display stand. And like I said, that really helps to support the figure's weight. Just give him a stand like that. 
Um, of the other accessories that come included with Darkwing Duck, let's just remove those and put those off to the side. The figure comes also included with some swappable heads. Now, I say some swappable he heads. He doesn't actually have as many as Nega Duck. He has this defaulted head, which is basically just a neutral smiling face for Darkwing. Good looking head. But he also has this one too. Like he's uttering one of his very famous phrases. He's the chill that runs up your spine, for example. I think he's the, was the, the milk that spoils your cereal? What's that other one? I, he's had several of them. But this one has a really nice looking look to this one, actually, where you can see his eyes are sort, sort of shifting off to the side there. Any one of these, by the way, can be swapped out. It's just a case of popping off the existing head. By the way, just before I do that, obviously he does come in clue with his fedora. The fedora for both Darkwing, I'm just going to put him down for a second here, and Negas seem exactly the same. As well, the capes that they also come included with, whether you use the ones that I've currently got right now or you decide to have more waving capes, both those also appear to be the same as well. Darkwing's, Darkwing ducks and Nega ducks almost look like fried eggs, but you just take the hat basically and you put it over top of his hair. There's enough clearance there where I don't have to worry that the strands of the hair are going to get damaged. This basically just sits over top of Darkwing's head like this. I'm not sure what the correct way of doing this is, because you can put it a couple of different ways. You can have it facing this way, for example, which would be facing the opposite way. You'd also have it, maybe not facing down, but you could also have it maybe facing off somewhat. I think this is the closest thing. I'm kind of even, again, looking on the back of the packaging. This is kind of what they've got. I mean, it holds pretty well. It's not going to be going anywhere. It certainly does look better than those original Playmates uh, Darkwing Duck figures that we've had a look at, where obviously it was just basically like a flat head for the top of Darkwing. I still would have made the fedora even bigger. The, like in the cartoon, it seems like it's a lot larger than what we actually get right here, but it holds pretty good. You don't really have to put too much pressure on it at all. And like I said, it holds extremely well on the figure's head. If though you want to change out the head, we're just going to pop the head off here. Just wiggle it off, remove it from the provided post. And then again, you're just going to swap it out with this one instead. Just before we actually do that, though, I did want to talk a little bit about Darkwing and also Negas because they're going to have very similar designs of their bodies. Obviously, he's going to have himself the uniform top there. But with what they've done with the cape, I'm not sure if I really love. The cape itself can be swapped out. What it is, is when you remove it, you're removing as well the front collar piece. So when you take it off, for example... Just going to detach it like that. You can see that there's a slot right here, and there's a couple of provided slots on the sides of the shoulders. When you are doing this, especially when you're moving the figure around, I find frequently that the cape does detach from his body. When you are putting it back in place, for example, you have to put it forward down like this, and then sort of shift it forward as you're pushing down the sides. It isn't always successful. Sometimes, especially for Nega Duck, I've noticed between the two figures, his cape is one that seems to shift around a lot more. But again, if you wanted to swap this out, just a case of attaching this all together and putting it off to the side, take then his flowing cape, and the flowing cape attaches the exact same way. It's going to be a little bit harder, though, because again, you've got still, there's a peg on either side, there's a peg on the back, and those provide, slot into those provided holes. But with this one especially, because there's now so much weight on the side here, it often kind of off shifts the cape, and then it comes detached from this. Not really sure what else I would have honestly done. I mean, it's fine and good for me to say I'm not a big fan of the way they designed the cape, but unless I'm offering up other options, I'm not really solving any solutions. Maybe if they could have maybe added a peg in something, like, for example, maybe put a longer, deeper hole in the sides of his shoulders where this basically would just pegged onto the side. I'm guessing, obviously, they wanted to keep the collar in place for both the examples of the cape, but just with the way that they attach it, like I said, the capes don't always stay well in place. Then you can take yourself the alternate head sculpt that we wanted to use, and that just plugs in place. Again, you might find yourself sort of just holding onto the cape, going back and realizing you're just going to have to fix it a little bit later on. Pop the head down onto the ball joint, making sure it's all the way on there as well. If you're having any tough time, by the way, like I'm having a tough time right now, you can always heat the head in hot water. Again, what the problem with the cape is, especially this one, is that the cape often ships forward. Even, even just even holding the front of it a little bit with your thumb can also help just kind of keep the cape in place while you're putting the head back in place. There we go. There we go. And then, of course, you know, like I said, you're going to see the cape is already starting to move around on it. Then we can go ahead and take ourselves the fedora and put the fedora back down on Darkwing's head. Of the two different heads, this is the one I prefer the most. I just really like the side eye that Darkwing's got here. Still, though, the cape is just something that I'm finding is shifting around way too much. Again, I'm not offering up any other solutions other than just not really crazy with the direction that they went with it. But I do like the idea, at least, that he does have swappable cape options. 
As for the figure's articulation, his head's going to be on a ball joint. So again, it's going to rotate back and forth, up and down, back and forth this way as well. The arms do come out at 90 degrees uh, uh, while you're doing it. Of course, this is going to be moving around a lot for you. Forward and back on the arms. There's also only just a single hinge on the elbow that allows the forearm to rotate. And the hands as well rotate all the way around. The upper torso isn't so much on a ball joint. It looks, if anything, like there might be a slight swivel, but I just can't move it too well. I mean, then there's also, again, the leg where it moves forward and back. You can also split it out this way. And I will say about the ankles, I've noticed on mine, they're a little on the looser side. Maybe this one is a little bit looser than this one here. There is also a slight ankle rocker. I definitely would say, though, if you're looking to get this guy on display, maybe put him on a display stand just for the risk that, especially if you're going to be putting a gun in his hand, for example, you just don't want Darkwing to start wobbling back and forth. The cape, as you can probably already see, does give the figure a little bit more leaning to the side. So definitely I would encourage you guys using a display stand if you're looking to get these figures for yourself. On to now Negaduck. Negaduck's got a lot of cool stuff going for him. I mean, maybe not as interesting and not as cool. He comes included with a very long kind of machete sword. Uh, the hands, by the way, though, as we've already had a look at, he does have, again, like the gripping hands. So any one of the accessories, for the most part, hold pretty well. Just a case of sliding them in, kind of just twisting them slightly to the side. This one is a little harder to do, but I would certainly say, like, again, heat the hand in hot water. One of my biggest worries was also the fact that with the hands having this much friction against whatever you're sliding into them, I was worried that it would start to flake the paint. It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. But if you're also worried of similar things happening, again, heat the hand just a little bit just to pry the plastic away from itself. Uh, he also comes to clear with a bomb. Uh, the thing about the bomb is there's no real way to hold it. I mean, even if you take the gripping hand, it's never going to be able to fit around the wick properly. Um, they don't really have like a flat hand, for example, for this. So this might just be something instead that you're going to have to display alongside the figure instead. The figure also comes included with a chainsaw. We're getting a little violent, aren't we? The chainsaw is nicely molded here in a very similar mustard yellow to what he has here for his tunic. And he also got, again, you don't really have to worry much about cutting yourself here. The teeth on the chainsaw are nicely sculpted here in gray plastic. This actually can fit into his hand. I had it fitting into his hand at the beginning of this review. You sort of have to, if you kind of pick up the figure here, you kind of have to wedge the one side with his fingers in between the handle, kind of bending, obviously, the arm as well. Just get the one hand's just in tucked in tucked into the handle and then with this hand which i've already then swapped out you have to kind of tuck the fingers underneath it and he actually does have the means to hold the chainsaw not well not something that if you were to bang it for example i'm sure he's probably just going to end up dropping it but he holds the chainsaw pretty good something also that the figure comes included with as well already mentioned is a big rocket launcher or bazooka there's no real blast effects to this one uh, for example, I thought you could use, say, this one, the one that came clue for Darkwing Duck, but it doesn't fit in. You would think that they probably would have made these universally sized so that if you wanted to use this one with Nega Duck, you could, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It doesn't fit in. Uh, the figure also comes included with a another version of his cape, which is very similar, of course, to Darkwing Ducks. It's just colored a little bit differently with the now burgundy red on the inside. And he also comes included with his fedora, which again is the exact same fedora that we got with Darkwing Duck as well. What he does also come included with, kind of makes me a little bit more jealous that Darkwing didn't unfortunately have these, is also some pretty decent looking head sculpts. Darkwings, as we already had a look at with his defaulted head, kind of gave us just more of a neutral expression, a very happy-go-lucky Darkwing. I kind of like more of the evil, kind of sinister look that Darkwing could kind of have as well. Obviously, if he's trying to evoke fear in the criminals around him, I think having the eyes furrowed down like this would have worked really well. I mean, in fact, actually, even this alternate head sculpt, even though it's a lot more evil and sinister, I think could have also worked really well for Darkwing. Maybe if I had to trade in one, I'd trade in this one and keep this for only solely Negaduck. And maybe had they included this one as an alternate for Darkwing too, then he could have also had two different alternate head sculpts similar to Negaduck. Uh, the one thing I will say about Negaduck, though, is that some of the colors are a little off. Now, the coloring that they've used for the mustard here for his, for his jacket here doesn't quite gel 100% to the color, color of the color that they used for the cape. It's a little bit lighter of a yellow. It's pretty close, though. The cape attaches the exact same way. Again, you would just be a case of swapping out the capes from the one that he has right now. I really like the head sculpts, and I really love the way they've painted the heads for, for Negaduck, especially liking the lighter coloring of the, of the green on the inside by his pupils, where it's not quite the same coloring as sort of that bluish color around it. It's a really nice painted figure. I will say though with Nega Duck though, if you did want to change out the head for example, it works the exact same way. Just popping the head off the provided post. Do you also want to change the cape while we're at it? Okay, we'll change the cape as well. Just attach that working the exact same way. It slots exactly the same way. 
And I know already that this is going to be moving around, so I'm not going to attach, commit the cape completely to the rest of his body just yet. We're just going to put it down for right now, kind of just holding it in place. And then we're let's get a let's get an evil version of Mega Duck. Like basically, they're all evil. But we're going to go ahead and again take the head and we're just going to wiggle it onto the provided post. There we go until it attaches in place. Then we can go back and kind of fix the cape. But the cape is going to be the exact same way as Darkwing. It's not going to feel 100% like it's always sitting in place. And this, sh this one shifts, I noticed, a little bit more. Then we can also as well take ourselves the fedora. And the fedora is also going to fit over top of his head. There's no real right way or wrong way of Nostic again to attach these. If you wanted to have it this way, you could. If you wanted to have it this way, you also could as well. I think for Nega Duck, I kind of like to have it facing this way. And again, it sits okay. This one doesn't sit, I've noticed, as well as Dark Wings, but it basically attached the exact same way. And it doesn't seem to be the case that they're caus causing any damage to the little strands of hair that they have on the top of the head. The articulation, again, for, for Nega Duck would be exactly the same as Darkwing, essentially just using these same bodies. But seeing as they are, after all, twins, I mean, Nega Duck is basically just a mirror flip copy of Darkwing, it makes then sense, logical sense, that Diamond Select would have essentially just used the same mold and cast then Nega Duck as an exact same figure. The thing about it, though, is that while this set is fairly inexpensive, again, if you guys are looking to get this one for yourself online, it sets at $50. $50 is not bad, considering we get as much as we actually get with Darkwing and Nega Duck. I think, though, I have to wonder, though, with the sizing of package, because I don't know if you noticed at the beginning of this review, that was pretty large packaging that came with both Darkwing and Negaduck. I have to wonder if maybe they could have maybe streamlined it, made it smaller, and not just released Darkwing and Negaduck separately. Negaduck may have been then the harder sell. I, I obviously get that because maybe not everyone, a casual collector may only then really be just interested in Darkwing Duck. But also that same casual collector may have really no interest to get a Negaduck and only solely just want to get Darkwing. And he has to kind of unfortunately be forced to get himself a Negaduck, a figure that he may not really actually want. Helping to aid here in final looks, I brought back the clear acrylic post display stands, not only to support the weight of the gas effect on the end of Darkwing's gas gun, but also as well to hold the big giant bazooka in Nega's hands. The figures also have the big flowing capes, which unfortunately does throw a little bit of off-kilteredness when it comes to displaying the figures on the shelf. But if you have the figures with weapons in their hands to wield, then you can also use the clear acrylic posts. And they also serve not only the function to hold the guns, but also keep the figures at bay as well. You know, to go back to the flowing capes, the one thing about the capes, though, is that I'm not a big fan of the way they attach onto the figures' bodies. They maybe needed to make the the indentations to their bodies maybe a little bit deeper maybe making the pegs on the capes a little bit longer so that you could really root the capes down into the tops of their bodies and would hold a little bit better both every time when i'm moving the figures around especially like their heads their capes are always prone to detaching from their costumes and i always have to relocate them the figures though like i said are available right now they're 49.99 at least some of the online sites that i've looked at so again for 50 dollars, i think that's a pretty decent deal considering you're not only getting just the dark wing but you're also getting nega as well yes it may mean for casual collectors that are really only just interested in darkwing duck i don't know why you wouldn't be interested in an evil version of darkwing duck come on but if you guys are again only wanting really to get darkwing duck it has to unfortunately be the case that you get darkwing you have to get nega with him as well now this set is also the first set that we'll be looking at and hopefully a future for darkwing duck figures a diamond select if it's any been the case if we looked at their past examples of having other licenses in hand like ghostbusters for example think of how many figures diamond did for ghostbusters before the licensing went on to a different figure company and other figure companies like i said when it comes to other licenses have really dropped the ball if it's any example with the ghostbusters i hope that we're going to get some of the future rogues also make appearances here as figures for the darkwing duck cartoon and hey, not, let's not just look at the original 80s cartoon. How come we haven't also gotten ourselves a rebooted Darkwing Duck series? Which actually, I think Darkwing Duck was in the 90s. But a re rebooted series. And not just the cameo we got in the new Duck DuckTales, which also got cancelled, unfortunately. I want a full-out Darkwing Duck rebooted cartoon series. Who else is with me? Show of hands. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of hands in this room. I'd like to thank as well the folks over at Diamond Select that did provide the sample of the brand new Darkwing Duck, Darkwing, and Nega Duck that we could have a look in this review. As already mentioned, it is available online, and I would imagine as well, if you go to your local comic book stores, some may not all stock them, but the ones that normally stock Diamond stuff may also be having this one in, in their inventory as well. Have you already picked up the set for yourself? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you would also be interested, not only in a rebooted Darkwing Duck cartoon, but also future figures from the folks over at 
Diamond. If you guys did enjoy this video, I want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing, and you certainly do want to stick around for more, uh, we may have to put a pause on Darkwing for right now because we don't really have anything else Darkwing related, but we will definitely be looking at some more Diamond Select stuff, so make sure you're coming back here on a regular basis. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.